to understand what these cuts mean for news and democracy. Let's hear from Quentin Dempster. print media, including Fairfax, and our closet supporters in News Limited. <laughs> I thank you all for your moral support. <laughs> Putting aside rivalry, all thinking content creators, journalists and program makers in Australia know what is at stake here. On Monday, executives from the Human Resources Department of the ABC, if you are a tabloidist, you'd call them hit spots, will start to administer targeted redundancy notices. It is at that point the real agenda and its motivation should become apparent. We will see for sure the ABC abandon localism on TV current affairs with the loss of the 7.30 Friday shows, New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, South Australia, Western Australia, Audiences in the one newspaper capitals will be left to endure the dogmatic simplicities of the Murdoch press. We will see Lateline, which over 25 years has held government to account and exposed the abuse of political and corporate power and institutional child sexual abuse stripped of much of its field reporting capacity. From early intelligence, it appears those programs on radio which require a depth of analysis, specialisation and preparation in production will be targeted. Radio, radio news bulletins will be cut from 10 minutes to 5 minutes, giving audiences just the headlines, not much more than the headlines, less substantive coverage of what is really going on, particularly at the local level. A news executive will fly around the world to sack many of our wonderful support staff and close some foreign bureau completely. The ABC wants all foreign correspondents to move to what's called video journalism, where the reporter has to shoot, light, sound record and video edit his or her own material as a cost-cutting exercise. Ridiculous! on foreign shoots for instantaneous news, live process and long-form current affairs are vital in the ed editorial collaborative process and for physical safety in sometimes very dangerous situations. Yeah. The quality of the ABC's international reporting, which has helped make the broadcaster so distinctive and trusted, is so sure to suffer. The ABC will be more reliant on syndicated agency material. The engagement of Australians with the world through the eyes of our in-situ correspondents will also suffer as those who remain will increasingly be instructed to chase ambulances and natural disasters for a bigger visual bang in the 24-hour news cycle. Thanks to Christopher Pine, a panicked, a panicked constituent, politician and disloyal cabinet minister from South Australia, for highlighting what we have long known. Through successive budget cuts and a management resourcing priority to win the digital race, the ABC is Sydney Central. The loss of the ABC's Adelaide TV production house, the last remaining regional TV producer outside Sydney and Melbourne, with the loss of more than 100 jobs, is a cultural and local tragedy. What is about to happen on Monday comes after the mindless vandalism to Australia's engagement with, the Asia, with Asia and the Pacific through the termination of the Australia Network contract. 
Foreign Minister Julie Bishop, who I acknowledge has done some determined diplomatic work to bring Vladimir Putin and Russia to account over the M817 <laughs> atrocity, and I acknowledge she has done all she can to help uh, the media alliance with the, uh, uh, with the liberation of Peter Gresta in Cairo. <laughs> but I'm glad Julie, Julie has shown the shallowness of her thinking when she terminated the Australia Network contract. She cited the ABC's display of editorial independence, apparently, over its coverage of the Burn Hands case and the ABC Guardian exposure of the Australian Signals Directorate's bugging of the mobile phones of the Indonesian President and his wife as a motivating influence in her decision to terminate the Australian Network contract. Julie Bishop wanted Australian Network to be a propaganda arm of the Australian Government in spite of the already agreed objective with DFAT, between the ABC and DFAT, to project Australia into the region as a robust liberal democracy capable of questioning domestic authority, reporting human rights abuse and political dissent wherever it occurs. The ABC in Australia has lost 70 of our Asia Pacific News Centre international program makers, in situ correspondents, and the chance to wire this country into Asia as never before through specially made quality, ethical news, business, sport, and entertainment programs to reach the region's estimated 3.3 billion mobile phone users. We have all this content paid for by the taxpayers and produced and uh, aggregated by uh, the ABC to reach to reach the Asia Pacific users. Radio Australia has been distressingly reduced to rip and read. Please note, people, that Julie Bishop terminated the contract at the nagging insistence of the Murdoch press. I can only hope she eventually realises what she has done through the exercise of her ministerial discretion. I must mention what is happening to SBS. Dateline has been gutted of its reporting strength and reportedly is to be made lighter if and when it returns to air next year. <laughs> Dateline has been a most courageous and cost-effective contributor in public broadcasting and investigative and exposure journalism worldwide. <laughs> to make it lighter, to make it lighter in an age of geopolitical tensions, terror, corruption and inhumanity is laughable. Yes. I appeal to Michael Levine and the, and the SBS board to think deeply before they do further damage to the hard-won reputation of SBS as an editorially independent service to a now polyglot Australia. The government wants to amend the SBS Act to allow SBS to increase its prime time advertising from five to ten minutes per hour. This will further dislocate audience loyalty for SPS with the already aggravating in-program program, uh, advertising interruptions. Audiences trying to engage with Jenny Brockie's excellent insight, Dateline, their documentaries and movies are unnecessarily provoked each time. This destructive dynamic, for whatever millions it will add to revenue in the short term, can only erode taxpayer support for SPS over time. In an age of fear and terror, Australia needs SPS as a countermeasure, delivering a sense of inclusion through multilingual services to our rapidly increasing migrant population, including this country's 600,000 Muslims. The noted casuist Malcolm Turnbull has said the incoming Prime Minister's pre-election statement that there would be no cuts to the ABC or SBS has to be taken in the context of his and Joe Hockey's prior warning about efficiencies at the broadcasters. Tony Abbott, Tony Abbott said unequivocally and unconditionally, no cuts to the ABC or SBS. A casuist is a person, especially a theologian, who attempts to resolve moral dilemmas by careful distinction but ultimately false reasoning. <laughs> in, the, 
in the Australian vernacular, that means bullshit. Yeah. Malcolm Turnbull is a bullshit artist. promising never to tell a lie for the Australian people. Let me recalibrate this. Malcolm Turnbull is a bullshit artist who has now compounded Tony Abbott's life. Yeah. Malcolm will never be the Prime Minister of Australia, and my camera sources say that currently is between Julie Bishop and Scott Morris. Oh. I appeal, ladies and gentlemen, I appeal, I appeal to members of the Liberal Party of Australia and the National Party to think carefully about the power play now apparent in what is a Rupert Murdoch-directed directed ideological attack on the public broadcasters of this country. If you get in the bed with Murdoch in the hope of tactical advantage in the adversarial game of politics, you will sell your soul. When the tide turns, we will dump you in the gutter and laugh at your gullibility. Yeah. Yeah. Memoirs from fallen political leaders, double-crossed business partners and pubs full of sack editors attest to his ruthlessness, his, uneth his unethical culture and expediency. The ABC was created in 1932 by the AJ Lyons Coalition Government, its creation actively supported by Robert Gordon Menzies, then a Victorian MP. SBS was created in 1979 by the Malcolm Fraser Liberal National Coalition Government, largely because the ABC was seen as deficient in providing multilingual services for millions of newcomers. I appeal to all political parties, including the Murdoch intimidated and recalcitrant Australian Labor Party, to now rewrite their media policies to secure a mainstream role for ABC and SBS as editorially and creatively independent, non-commercial public broadcasters or cybercasters through the digital revolution. No matter how many free trade agreements Australia signs in the now global economy, it is vital for the institutional strength of our democracy within the sovereign state of Australia that a taxpayer-funded public broadcasting system remains committed to audiences as citizens in a democracy and not consumers to be delivered up to advertisers. a message from Matt Peacock, the staff elect, the director of the ABC, who has been a conduit for staff concerns about the coming reshaping of the ABC. Matt joins with us in our resolve today. The fight has only just begun. There are forces at work in this country out to destroy the ABC and SBS and our unique public broadcasting system. We must not let this happen. We must never get tired. Thank you. Yeah.